Now, this problem, they want us to take the derivative of 6x minus 7 to the eighth power, but they don't want us to use the shortcut, which is the extended power rule. They want us to use the chain rule. And the chain rule says if you want to find dy dx, you can get to that by taking dy du times du dx. So in this example, I will let, where is my red marker? I will let u equals 6x minus 7. If you do that, then this problem can be written as y equals what? u to the 8th and u equals 6x minus 7. What's the derivative of this? First, the derivative of that's called what? dy du. You take in the derivative of y with respect to u. What's the derivative of that? 8 u to the 7th, good. The derivative of this will be called du dx. which equal to 6. Now bring this one down. It says you want dy dx. Okay. It's dy du. What's dy du? 8 u to the 7th times du dx. What's du dx? 6. 8 times 6, which is what? 48 u to the 7th. And what's the last step now? Replace u by 6x minus 7. And that's our final answer. You don't have to like distribute or anything? Oh, you can't. That's the power of 7. Yep. You can't multiply that by a question. Can we multiply this to 48 through? And I said, no, because the power here is more than 1. The only thing you can do, we can use Pascal triangle if you want and find what this equal to, then multiply by 48. I doubt that's what they wanted. This will be fine. Yeah. Thank you. You're welcome. Let's look at number 9. Now, this would be long there, this problem, a little bit long. Because what, what do you notice about this problem? You can't distribute that x through. Again, why? Because the power is 3. I mean, you could multiply this 3 times and multiply it by x and take the derivative. I don't think that was their intention of this problem. So what do you think they were looking for? What method were they hoping for us to do it? Chain if you have fraction, right? Product. Product rule, multiplications. So this is x times that one. The product rule says, let, let's call the first one f of x, which is x, and let's call the second one g sub x. So this piece is your f of x, this piece is your g sub x. While we're here, let's find the derivative. What is f prime of x? 1. What's g sub prime of x? There's a shortcut to that. That'll be 3 times what? 4x minus 12 to what power? Second. Are we done? times the derivative of what's inside the parentheses, which is 4. Do you want to simplify your answer? You can multiply the four, 3 times the 4. 3 times 4, which is what? 12 
times 4x minus 12 to the power of 2. So what is the derivative? What's dy dx? The product rule says that's what? f times what? g sub prime plus g times f prime. f times g sub prime plus g times f prime. What's f? x. And what's g sub prime? 12 times 4x minus 12 to the power of 2 plus g sub x, which is 4x minus 12 cubed times f prime, which is what? 1. Now, I like to simplify my answer because, I mean, it's fine there. They probably will accept it there. But if you look at them, both of these terms, what do they have in common? 4x minus 12 to what power? 2. So if I take 4x minus 12 squared, what is left in the first group? 12 and x, right? x times 12, 12x. And what's left in the other group? One of these pieces. Can we collect like terms now? What's 12x and 4x? 16x minus 12. And if you want to simplify it more, there's one more thing you can do, and that's what? Look at this group right here. Can you factor anything out of this group? You can take a 4. I'm not sure how far they want to go with it. That's 4x minus 3 times 4x minus 12 squared. Question on this one? Okay. Number 10. Now, me personally, and I think somebody brought that up last time in the back row. Someone said, can we avoid, uh, maybe not the back row, but do we have to use the quotient rule? And I said, no. Because you can actually do what? Change it to multiplication, use the product rule. So if I'm looking at this, that looks like 2x over what? x squared plus 3 to what power? A half. And if you want, you can bring it to the top and make it what? 2x times to the negative 1 half. So now since I change it to multiplication, what are we going to use? Product rule, yep. So let's let f of x equals 2x. And while we add it, let's take the derivative of that. What's the derivative here? 2. And let's let g sub x equals x squared plus 3 to the power of negative 1 half. What's the derivative of that? Uh, negative 1 half. Negative one half. Yep. Subtract 1 from the negative 1 half. What's minus 1 half minus 1? Negative 3 halves. We always subtract 1 from that power. That's why it's negative 3 halves times the derivative of what's inside the parentheses, which is what? 2x. And if you clean that, the 2 and the 2 will cancel each other out. That's negative x times x squared plus 3 to the power of negative 3 halves. That's g sub prime. 
Again, we can use the product rule, y sub prime equals f times g sub prime plus g times f prime. f is what? 2x, g sub prime, negative x times x squared plus 3 to the negative 3 halves, plus g sub x, which is x squared plus 3 to the negative 1 half, times f prime, which is 2. Clean it a little bit there. That's what? Negative, is it 2x squared? If you want to make that a fraction, over what? x squared plus 3 to what power? 3 halves plus 2 over what? x squared plus 3 to what power? 1 half. I don't know if they'll leave the answer like this. They could. I mean, I was surprised last time to see them. They left the answer in negative exponents. But if you don't like the negative exponents, if that was them, I mean, if that was me, I said, no, 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 let's find LCD, which is, since you have the same thing, we'll take the higher one. So I need to multiply both of these by x squared plus 3, the second fraction. You're multiplying by 1. So if you multiply by x squared plus 3, you will have negative 2x squared this will be 2 times x squared 2x squared plus 2 times 3 which is what 6 now remember the power here is 1 when you multiply you add the exponents what is 1 plus a half isn't that 3 halves Now you make it one fraction. Negative 2x squared plus 2x squared is gone, so what do you have there? 6. So the answer is 6 over x squared plus 3 to the 3 halves. Again, they might leave the answer as negative exponents. I really don't know how they want the answer. They might leave it like this, who knows. They might make that the square root of this one cubed. This actually one and a half, three halves is one and a half, right? So another way of writing that, one and a half. That's the one and the half is this one. When something is raised to the power of three halves, that means 1.5. This is the power of one, that's the power of 0.5 half. So any one of these answers is good. This is good. This is good. This is good. They'll probably even leave it like earlier when we did it. They might say, oh, you know what? Hey, wait a minute. You got square root in the bottom. We don't like that. Let's rationalize it. Then you multiply the top and the bottom by the square root of x squared plus 3. I'm just having too much fun now with the algebra there. Number 13. Well, before we do that, let's look at our book. And one of the rules says, what's the derivative of sine u before we do anything? It's cosine u times what? u prime. So a lot of times you'll see that we we'll, we'll like to put the u prime first. u prime times the cosine of u. That's going to come in handy. 
So what's the derivative of that? dy dx. Something is raised to the seventh power. That's the extended power rule or the general power rule. <coughs> what does our book call? I forgot. General power or extended power? General power rule. It says going to be the power which is 7 times what? Sine of 6 theta to what power? 6 times the derivative. Let me write it down. The derivative of what's inside that which is what? Sine of 6 theta. Oh. I didn't take the, I said the derivative. I didn't take it yet times the derivative of what's inside that, which is this one. Now we're going to take the derivative of this. Here's the 7. Sine, I like the 6 here, of 6 theta. Times, now let's take the derivative of the inside, the sine 6 theta. According to this rule, the derivative is what? Cosine 6 theta times the derivative of 6 theta, which is what? 6. The derivative of sine of u, this is u, u is 6 theta. <coughs> this is u. Derivative sine u is the cosine of u times what? u prime. And now the only thing I'm going to do, what's 6 times 7? Is that 42? I like to write them in descending power, ascending power, it doesn't really matter, but in order there. So I like to put the cosine first. You could have put the sine first. And that's my answer. There's six of these, one of these, and 42. Any question on this one? No? We good? Fourteen. Again, before we start that, what's the derivative of e to the u? Keep going. e to the u times what? u prime, or we like the u prime first. So this is u here, right there, negative x to the ninth is actually u. So what's the derivative here? What's dy dx? Let's take the derivative of negative x to the ninth, which is what? 9, negative 9x nine to the eighth times e to the u, which is what? And that's it. So this is u sub prime times, this is e to the u. The derivative of the top here, negative 9x to the 8th times e to the power of u. I like that one. Short. Now, if we remember the answer to this, we'll be in good shape for the next one. This is number 15. What do you notice here? This piece is the same as this question, right? E to the negative 9x, the same as the previous one. 
So we have a multiplication. So I have to use the product rule. What's f of x? x squared. What's the derivative of that? 2x. What's g sub x? e to the negative 9x. What's the derivative of that from the previous example right here? e to the 9x, right? Oh, 9x, I'm sorry. Oh, there's no square there. Okay, I thought it was the same one. My eyes were deceiving me. But the same idea. So let's look at the derivative e to the 9x right here. It's going to be the derivative of this one, which is what? Negative 9 e to the power of negative 9x. u sub prime e to the u. u sub prime, that's u here. The derivative of that is negative 9 times e to the u. Now we use the product rule dy dx f times g sub prime g times f prime f is x squared g sub prime plus g times f prime So that's negative 9x squared e to the negative 9x plus 2x e to the negative 9x. If you want, you can factor, I know you can factor an x out, but at least factor e to the minus 9x. What do you have? Negative 9x squared plus 2x. So I bet you they're going to write this one first. You can factor an x out, but they probably leave it like this. That looks clean, a little bit cleaner. And the last one, <coughs> is this one. Reminding you that the derivative of the natural log of u is what? u sub prime over u. u sub prime over u. Hmm. What is u in this example? u is e to the 9x. So dy dx is going to be, this is u here. So on the bottom is going to be e to the 9x. On the top is going to be the derivative of that. What's the derivative of e to the 9x? about 9e to the 9x. The derivative of 9x, that's again, e to the u again, like two problems into one. The derivative of this, which is 9 times e to the power of 9x. Now, can you simplify anything? e to the 9x will cancel, so what's the final answer? 9. Now, if you remember from tech math why the answer is 9, because if you look at the problem, I used to tell my students the natural log of e to the power is always equal to the power, because the natural log of e, they cancel each other out. Same thing with the log of 10 to a power. So this problem, actually, when you look at it mathematically, the natural log and E will cancel each other out. You end up with Y equals 9X, if you saw that. And what's the derivative of 9X? 
just 9. If I pull my notes from Tech Math 2, I guarantee you you'll see that equation. The natural log of e to the power, I see the natural log and e will always cancel each other out. You end up with the power. And the same thing, if you have y equals the common log of 10 raised to a power, mathematically these two will cancel each other out and you end up with y equals the power. So if you simplify the problem, two ways of doing it. If you simplify the problem like I did here, you can write this problem as y equals 9x, then take the derivative of that. If you didn't see it, do it the long way. Your answer is still the same. Any other questions before I stop the camera on these homework? We all good? <laughs>